Welcome to my review of the new MiniWare TS101 soldering iron. The TS101 is MiniWare's latest addition to its soldering iron family, which is the successor to the much loved TS100. Similar to its predecessor, it has the option to be powered via USB or a DC barrel jack, which gives the user the option to power it from things such as a LiPo battery or any other DC power source between 9 to 24 volts. It's capable of a maximum output of 65 watts via the DC jack, which means the TS101 gets up to temperature at a decent speed. And great news for TS100 owners because you can use the same iron tips in the new TS101 iron. The temperature accuracy isn't the best I've seen from MiniWare, and the main body of the TS101 is made from plastic which does feel a bit cheap. However, when you consider it has a price tag of around US$60 US at the time of filming, then in my opinion you're getting good value for your money, and importantly, the flexibility to operate in a soldering iron from a portable power source such as a battery. This video is proudly sponsored by JLC PCB. I've been using their PCB manufacturing service before they became a sponsor of my channel. I've used their printed circuit boards in several build videos and I've always been impressed with their quality, speed and low cost. Prices start at $2 for 5 printed circuit boards, so wave goodbye to Vero board and take your projects to the next level with a custom PCB from JLC. Unboxing the TS101, you'll find a manual, the soldering iron, and a conical iron tip. MiniWare also offers several different iron tip profiles to choose from which you can buy separately. You also get a compact stand which clips onto the front of the iron. This feature might seem small, however this makes life so much better when you need to place the iron down on your workbench. And lastly, you'll receive one of MiniWare's high temperature silicone USB cables. Before we start testing, first I have to make a DC barrel jack to XT60 cable, which will allow me to run the iron from a LiPo battery. When the TS101 has been powered via the DC jack, the maximum power output is 65 watts, and for USB power it's slightly lower at a maximum output of 45 watts. Naturally I'm interested in testing both options during this video. Let's start off by using a Power Delivery 2.0 USB charger. Once booted up, the TS101 screen and menu system feels very familiar to MiniWare's other irons. I won't go through every available option in the menu system, but rest assured you can program the TS101 to your heart's content. With three programmable temperature presets, right or left hand mode, sleep time and much more to choose from. Before testing, I made sure to set the PD max limit to 45 watts and the DC power source to 3S which relates to the 3 cell LiPo battery I'll be using later. Starting from room temperature, the TS101 gets to 350C in 14.7 seconds on USB power. I perform the same test except this time we're using a fully charged 3 cell LiPo battery. Compared to the previous test the lower output voltage from the LiPo battery adds significant heat up time, clocking in at a rather slow 40 seconds. If speed is your number one concern then consider powering the TS101 from a 24 volt power supply which will bring the heat time down to less than 10 seconds in my test. 
Next, let's test the temperature overshoot and accuracy using my Heiko thermometer. With the iron set to 350 Celsius, I wanted to see if there was any temperature overshoot during heat up. The temperature peaked at 378C, where it pretty much stabilised around there. There is a temperature calibration option in the menu which I used, however if anything it made the temperature accuracy worse than factory calibrated, reaching 386C. Fortunately I can restore the factory settings via the menu. When it comes to soldering, tinning copper cables is a breeze. The iron rapidly applies enough heat to the wire to quickly wick the solder up. So how about something more challenging like tinning a heavy 4AWG cable? Heavy cables like this are not usually soldered, instead they are crimped, but in the interest of presenting the TS-101 with a real challenge, we'll have a go. This also gave me an excuse to try the boost mode which quickly bumps up the temperature for as long as you hold down the button. The solder didn't work through the entire cable, however the TS-101 did a respectable job and proved it's a very capable soldering iron that will easily tackle almost any soldering jobs in the workshop. So the TS-101 isn't going to take first prize for being the most temperature accurate, the fastest or necessarily the most compact soldering iron I've used. However, it does have a special place in my toolbox. You see, its nearest competitor in my toolbox is this butane soldering iron. I hate this thing with a passion. They are always too hot or too cold, and the only reason I have one is because sometimes I'm soldering at a location that either doesn't have power or it's very difficult to get an extension cord to. Maybe I'm up a ladder, maybe I'm working on a car, all those kind of things. But now, with the TS-101, that can literally go in the rubbish, because the TS-101, when powered from a LiPo battery, is sort of cordless. I mean, you do have a cord between the battery and the soldering iron, of course, but you don't need a mains power cord, extension cord, and all that rubbish. That's why I really like this.